In celebration of our recent discovery in the atmosphere of Venus, I want to take another look at the Drake Equation. A lot of new information has been made available to us, and much of that is fairly recent. For instance, we have a much better idea of just how many exoplanets are out there, and how many are potentially habitable by species like us. We also have better numbers around average star formation in galaxies, and now, some interesting evidence concerning just what kinds of planets life can be found on. Before we nerd out though, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed. I'm having a blast putting these videos together, and it wouldn't be near as fun without you. Thank you. And if you're new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe. I'm actively growing this channel and would love for you to be part of the conversation. Now, let's get our nerd on. The Drake Equation is a statistical argument dreamed up in 1961 by Frank Drake. His goal was to estimate the number of communicative intelligent species that may exist in our Milky Way galaxy. The signs of life we are detecting in the atmosphere of Venus is bringing more credence to the sneaking suspicion that life takes hold in a much wider range of circumstances than we originally thought. With that knowledge in hand, I think it's fair to say that we can now assume complex life has more opportunities to come about, and in relation, intelligent life. It appears the rare earth proponents may have taken a blow to their position, not because more earth-like planets exist, but because life can take hold in a much broader set of circumstances than what is found here on earth. Earth's uniqueness may not play as big of a role in Drake's equation than we thought. Anyways, the Drake equation looks like this. It looks fairly straightforward, but that's deceptive. He takes the average rate of star formation, multiplies that with the fraction of those stars that have planets, multiplies that by the average number of planets that could potentially support life per star, then multiplies that by the number of planets that actually develop life. He then multiplies that by the number of planets that form intelligent life, then multiplies that by the fraction of civilizations that develop technology that releases detectable signs of their existence into space, and finally multiplies this number by the length of time for which such civilizations release detectable signals. As you can imagine, each one of these features is a whole new foxhole all on its own. For instance, the number quoted in Wikipedia for average number of stars formed per year was a range, 1.3 to 3 stars. However, there is evidence that star formation in our galaxy is probably upwards of 7. That's a significant delta, which begs the question, are we just way above average or do we need to take another look at that number? Also, we now know that the fraction of these stars that have planets is, or is very close to, 1. Meaning near every star out there has a series of planets orbiting them, and at least one of these planets may be able to support life as we know it. That last number, number of planets that can harbor life, has just gone up, and as far as I can tell it's gone up significantly. After all, it seems like once we gained the ability to detect signatures of life, we did, right in our own cosmological backyard no less. Which brings us to the question, how often does intelligent life develop? As far as I can tell, this question is needlessly controversial. I'm of the opinion that intelligent life is abundant in the universe. People who argue with this position tend to provide as evidence the following. Look at Earth. Of all the species that exist and have ever existed on Earth, only one developed intelligence. Therefore, intelligence must be just as rare in the universe. I would counter this by saying, on Earth, the dominant species gained intelligence. Every habitable planet out there, with complex life, must have a dominant species, and given enough time, that species would inevitably gain an intelligence. If this is indeed the case, then there would be an incredible number of intelligent species out there. We'd be separated significantly by space, and more importantly by time, but they most certainly exist, in number. And this is the number, the number of intelligent species, that I tend to focus on in the Drake Equation. The final two expressions in the equation never made much sense to me, or rather I don't understand their relevance. They are, the fraction of civilizations that develop a technology that releases detectable signs of their existence into space, and the length of time for which such civilizations release detectable signals into space. There are any number of reasons as to why an advanced civilization would not communicate outwards. Many believe that Earth communicating out to the universe is not a good idea. The late Stephen Hawking warned against broadcasting our location and existence. Dominant species tend to be the predators of their ecosystems. Odds are, the universe is full of technologically advanced alpha predators, many of whom may not have shed their predatory ways with their technological evolution. We haven't. Drake's equation, interpreted one way, with very conservative numbers, makes it appear as though we are the only intelligent species in our galaxy, and possibly the observable universe. But tweak these numbers just a bit, and update them with our new knowledge in hand, and it would be foolish to believe we are the only ones, and more practical to consider us but one intelligent species, of millions. 
After all, when Drake originally dreamed up his equation, we were not aware of just how many stars out there had exoplanets, or how many were in habitable zones. And now, we know we can extend the range of those habitable zones to accommodate new circumstances under which life can develop. Perhaps the grandest accomplishment, coming out of the recent news concerning Venus, is that it appears as though we now have a reliable approach for detecting one of the telltale signs of life that we may be able to apply to other exoplanets. This announcement may be the first in a barrage of new and more dramatic revelations. I suspect that over the next several months, we will have an avalanche of discoveries similar to the avalanche that followed the emergence of our ability to detect exoplanets. It'll start slow, but like any avalanche, will quickly pick up speed and mass. Drake's equation is not so much an answer, but a tool, and it's telling us we are not alone, not by far, and I suspect as we continue to discover new ways of observing our universe, that we'll discover that our cosmos is lush with life and a range of intelligent species that is literally unfathomable. Thank you for listening. If you like my work, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. And remember, this ride is not without risk. Be careful out there, and take care.